And the next topic here in our video is the thermochem on thermochemistry is the concept of enthalpy. And here we're going to talk about the definition. What does it really mean? What is enthalpy? So the basic definition, and by the way, we use the letter H to indicate enthalpy. It's the heat content of the object or the substance that we're dealing with. And so when it changes from one to another, typically through a chemical reaction, but it can be through a physical change. Whenever there's a change, either physically or chemically, the heat, con can, heat content can change. The enthalpy can go up or the enthalpy can go down. Now, if the enthalpy, the heat content of the substance goes down, that means it loses heat and that would then be considered an exothermic reaction, which means that would then readily take place. So heat given off is something that objects, chemistry, chemical reactions readily like to do. On the other hand, if the enthalpy of the substance goes up, that means it has to receive heat and receiving heat is something that in nature typically doesn't happen. We like to give off heat from where there's a high energy content down to a low energy content, but it typically doesn't go the other way around. And so we have to kind of force it, so we have to introduce heat or add heat to the process. So typically speaking, we talk about the change in enthalpy, and we call that delta H. This little triangle here means delta or change in, and so it's either the heat given off or the heat absorbed. If the delta H is, um, <clears throat> is positive, that means that the heat content went up. If delta H is negative, that means the heat content went down. And again, negative means when down means it gives off heat, and that's again the natural process. Now, keep in mind also that we do this typically at constant pressure of one atmosphere. So whenever we deal with reactions or, or changes, we like to do it at constant pressure of one atmosphere. And temperature-wise, we like to do it at 25 degrees centigrade or 298 Kelvin. Now, here, this equation right here is kind of an important one. Whenever we have a chemical reaction, we want to look at the enthalpy of the products, that stuff we end up with, minus the enthalpy of the reactions where we started from. And again, if the products contain more heat or more energy than the reactants, then of course that would be an endothermic reaction. That means we have to give heat to the process for the products to have more heat than the reactants that we started with. If the enthalpy of the products is lower than the enthalpy of the reactions, then of course this would be a negative number and that's an exothermic reaction. It takes place readily. Another way of looking at it, an exothermic, exothermic process or reaction, whatever you want to call it, this is where heat is given off. That means the enthalpy change is negative, less than zero means it's negative. That means that the enthalpy of the products that you end up with is less than the enthalpy of the reactions, meaning you end up with less energy within the products that you had in the reactions. On the other hand, if we have an endothermic process, that means heat is absorbed. Again, we need to force that by adding heat to the process. That means the enthalpy change is greater than zero, means enthalpy went up. That means the enthalpy of the product is greater than the enthalpy of the reactions, which was smaller. So we end up with more heat or more heat content or more energy content than we started with. And here's some real practical examples. Let's say we have a hydrogen gas and fluorine gas. And sure enough, in nature, hydrogen tends to uh, be a diatomic molecule, and so does fluorine. Fluorine and hydrogen tend to become diatomic molecules. But when we put the two gases together, when we put hydrogen and fluorine gas together, they will then turn into hydrogen fluoride. And the reason for that is because typically hydrogen only has one electron in its valence band, and fluorine has seven electrons in its second energy uh, level valence band. Hydrogen would like to have two, fluorine would like to have eight. The draw, the pull of fluorine to have eight is much stronger than the hydrogen pull to have two. So fluorine wins, it will grab the electron from the hydrogen, pull it away from the hydrogen, and fill its valence band so that it now has eight electrons in its outer band. Of course, when that happens, and let me find my pen here, this becomes then negatively charged because it has one extra electron and it has protons, and the hydrogen uh, ion will now become positively charged because it has one less electron than proton, and then because of the opposite charges, they attract each other and turn into a hydrogen fluoride molecule. It turns out that this is a lower energy state than what it started with, so therefore the change in enthalpy is negative. 
That means the enthalpy of the product is lower than the enthalpy of the reactants that we started with. So it's a downhill thing that goes naturally. And so naturally this reaction will take place. And here you can see that the change in enthalpy of formation, as we call it, that's what the F stands for, the change in enthalpy of formation is a minus 268.61 joules per mole for hydrogen fluoride. That's another example. Let's say we have hydrogen gas and want to pull the hydrogens together and make them into monatomic atoms um, instead of a diatomic molecule. Now again, that takes heat, therefore this is an endothermic reaction. Naturally, hydrogen likes to, likes to be in this state and not in this state. To make that happen, you have to put energy into it to pull the hydrogens apart because normally they start like this, so they have kind of a sharing thing here where they each, 50% of the time, share the two electrons. But if they um, pull them apart and make it look like this, then they each have one electron missing in their valence band of the first energy level. So that's not a preferred situation for hydrogen. It's a higher energy state, so we have to put energy into it to go from here to there. And therefore, the change in enthalpy, or formation as we call it, is a positive number. Therefore, it's 218.2 joules per mole. That's a measured value, of course. And again, you can see the difference. If the change in enthalpy is negative, it's a rate of reaction that just wants to happen because it gives off heat, it goes to lower energy state. If the change in enthalpy is a positive number, then you have to make it happen by putting energy into it because now you're forcing it into a higher energy state where it doesn't want to be. So hopefully that was an explanation, helps you understand what enthalpy means. There you go, that's how we look at it.